uh, as it's going 10.30, I'd like to welcome everyone along to this uh, Plan Applications Committee meeting on Tuesday, 13th of December. I can remind everyone to make sure their mobile phones are switched off and note that this meeting may be recorded and subsequently made available to the public for listening purposes. Thank you. Lucy, could you confirm this, Edward, please? Good morning, everyone. We have 16 members present. We are quoted. And I have apologies from Councillor Diggle and Councillor McGregor. Councillor Ogilvy, Councillor Witts are not present, but maybe along later in the meeting. And Councillor Blake has indicated that he is intending to be along later in the meeting. Noted, thank you. Have we got any declarations of interest? No. Could we agree to the minutes of the previous meeting? Lucy, could you read out could you read out the procedures to be followed, please? The Planning Applications Committee will consider each application in turn as detailed on the agenda. The case officer or other appointed officer will make a short presentation addressing the determining issues accompanied by digital images. Any late information, amendments or corrections will re be reported at this time. Members may ask questions of officers following the pre presentation on points of clarification. The Chairman has been provided with a list of eligible representers who have registered to speak at this meeting within the period specified in Council policy. No other persons will be allowed to speak. The Chairman will individually invite those who have registered in advance to speak to make their presentation, after which they may be questioned by committee members. No questions may be asked of members. The order of eligible parties being heard will be as follows. Third parties objecting to an application, third parties supporting an application, statutory consultees objecting to an application, elected members of Dumfries and Galloway Council who are not members of the Planning Applications Committee, such members should withdraw from the committee chamber after making their presentation, applicants or their agents, representatives who have been placed in alphabetical have been placed in alphabetical order and a copy of the public speaking list is available from the committee officer taking notes of our proceedings. Presentations will be strictly limited to three minutes per person, excepting for national and major developments, which by their very nature are more complex, where the time limit will be five minutes. The chairman of the committee will ask you to come to a conclusion if you take too long. Representers are encouraged to use the time allotted to clarify any points they consider material and address the determining issues. Certain matters are not normally material planning considerations and will not be taken into account by the Council when deciding on a planning application. Representers should not raise any new matters without explaining why they were not raised earlier with the case officer. Please do not repeat what is in the report as members will have already read the report. After all the representations have been heard, the meeting is then in formal session and no members of the public may address the committee from the public gallery. The Planning Applications Committee will then proceed to determine the application or, where appropriate, agree a recommendation to be made to full council who will determine the application. Thank you, Lucy. Could we go on to item four? We're four on the agenda is the 6 Kirtland Court, Kirkham, 16 stroke B stroke 1 stroke 0 147 and the officer's recommendation is to refuse. And we've got Iona Brooks speaking on this one. Just whenever you're ready, Iona. Thank you, Chair. Today we have uh, an application for an alterations and extension to a uh, dwelling. The, under the scheme of delegation, the application requires to be considered before you because six individual and time is received and third party objections on material planning grounds have been received. The application relates to six Kirkland Court, Kirkholm. It is a modest single storey semi detached dwelling. Presently, there is only a ground floor which comprises of two bedrooms, a lounge, a kitchen, and bathroom. 
and it is proposed to have a one-and-a-half-storey extension which should extend the gable by approximately two metres and project from the front elevation of the property by approximately 1.8 metres. The design incorporates finishes that would include zinc, roof cladding, bifolding doors, Juliet balcony and timber cladding. This would um, form a master ensuite bedroom on the upper floor. This is the front elevation of the building. You can see it's semi-detached. And this is the entrance into that cul-de-sac with the application site just visible to the right. The property um, benefits just now from a very modest cartilage. This is the rear elevation of the, the property. And you can see just after the second window, there is the boundary fence and the boundary fence running along to the right. And that is the existence of the rear cartilage of the property. And this is the side elevation of the property looking front and looking back. This is the relationship between Six Cackling Court and its neighbouring property at Cairnview. And again, the same view, just a bit closer. And you can appreciate if that gable is extended by two metres, it's going to have quite a dominating effect on the neighbouring property. And here again, just a similar thing, just overlooking the neighbouring property. <coughs> it's considered that extension and alterations are significant in comparison to the modest proportions of the property as it stands at the moment. It fails to respect the small character and appearance and scale of the existing dwelling. It would overwhelm the host dwelling and neighbouring dwellings, and it does not retain any principal architectural features that are presently there. And it's also considered that proposed materials do not relate well to the neighbouring dwelling or the other dwellings within the vicinity. Therefore, due to the unchar uncharacteristic and unsympathetic detailing of it, it is considered that the proposal would overwhelm and materially detract from the appearance of the dwelling and the wider area, and it's therefore recommended for review. Thank you. Members, points of clarification. Patsy. Yes, I'm just looking at 4.4 in the report, and, and it's about the size, the, the extension. You say it's the, 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 the extension and alterations are significant. Is there a guideline by which, um, when you've got a certain size of house or building, whatever, you can add a certain <coughs> amount onto it without any, any problems at all? Um, you know, uh, I don't know how to ask it in planning terms, but I mean, there's nothing here specific. It, it, it's just a significant, and it's um, so there is nothing to say. There's permitted development rights which householders can extend the property by a certain amount without requiring planning permission, and that is set down on guidelines. But again, that's a case by case basis, and it depends on the individual property, and you have to look at several considerations given if the property has already previously been extended or the size of the cartilage and the like. There's no guidelines at all as to how, if it extends, goes beyond the remit of the permitted development rights, there is no, um, there is no guidelines there. It just depends on the individual case, and we have to look at several considerations. And in, just, in this instance, it's just felt that the, um, the actual um, alterations and extension proposed would just uh, detract from the actual host dwelling as it stands, and it would overwhelm what is already there in existence. Any other members? Ian. Can I just ask if the, if the applicant has, since the, the, the um, application was submitted, uh, has made any effort to, to um, uh, scale it back at all? The, this current application has been amended slightly in that the, uh, the Juliet balcony at the first floor level previously laid out onto an, an, an external area. That has since been removed because there was issues that we were concerned that would cause issues of immunity um, on neighbouring properties. So the balcony, the actual external balcony has been removed and the bifold doors were just open onto an immediate Juliet balcony. Um, that's the only amendment that has been undertaken in this instance. Thanks. But, um, did that in any way, uh, well, I assume you would probably say no because you still think it's uh, the, the the extent, but how, how did that influence the application, the withdrawal of the Juliet balcony? Uh, given further consideration, once the amended plans were in, it was still felt that the application was inappropriate, and therefore it was still recommended for refusal. Andy, thanks very much. Can we go back? To the, the, I think it was the last picture you showed. Uh, yeah, that one. Uh, just to try and put it in perspective for us, where would the um, the uh, 
the proposed extension come out the front? Where would it come to? And again, the picture up the side, how far out? Could you switch the mic? Put the mic on, Iona. You'd put the mic on. Um, it will extend, I'll just show you this floor plan, the first instance. The projection out the front will extend two metres in front of the current building line there. If I just show you that one um, there. Um, you'll see the extension there from the original dwelling and it'll extend two metres out the gable. So when you're looking, it'll project almost <coughs> to in line with the front projection there to the left and then extend a further two metres to the right. Ian, just, just to get an understanding, what is the percentage compared to the footprint now, square metre ridge, what is the percentage, of, what is the increase compared to what's there? I'm sorry, I don't have those figures with me today. Any other member? David? I just a wee bit of clarity there. <clears throat> I thought you said earlier on that, that it was extended out the side towards the neighbour's fence as well as out the front. Or is that not the case? The gable will extend two metres towards the neighbour's fence, yes. It's a full width of the gable, and then it's a further what, two metres out the front. Correct, yes. Thank you. Anyone else? Nope. Could we have, could we have uh, Helen Brown, please, objector? Morning. My name's Helen Brown. I'm the owner occupier of Cairn Pew Kirkton Kirkland. Sorry, Helen, you've got th three minutes and I'll let you know 30 seconds to go. Right. The window from the extension is coming another. I can actually see when I was in that house on one occasion the pattern on my dinner plates on my table. That is the clear view she has in at the moment. Moving that two metres further in, I am it's totally invading my privacy. The roof windows are not going to be at an angle because of the sh shape of the roof. They're going to be overlooking all my windows as well. And it is a complete and total invasion of my privacy. And I strongly recommend that it's refused. Right. Thank you, Helen. Any, could you remain in your seat, Helen, in case any members have got any members? Is anyone any points? Nope, you may take your seat, Helen. Thank you. The John McIntyre, please, objector. And you've got three minutes as well, John, and I'll let you know 30 seconds to go. Um, well, obviously, Helen's my partner, so I live in the house as well. So, obviously, my case is similar to hers. Um, uh, when you're moving this two metres towards the house, it is going to encroach on our property and also our privacy. But that window you see there now, when it moves to the left, it's going to be a big window, and it's going to also uh, look into our property. It's, there's no change to that. Um, so we just feel that it, it's going to, uh, well, it's going to stop us living as normal because of the, the closeness. Um, I could read that, but it's just the same as what my partner's got, really. Um, also... <coughs> on the house next door, it's going to make it dwarf it. It's going to impact on a uh, five Kirtland Court as much as it's going to impact on us. So, thank you. Thank you. Any members? No. I've got a late speaker here, John Heinman. I'm going to give a bit of leeway. Uh, John, are you an objector or a supporter? Are you an objector or a supporter? Could you an objector. Me? Objecting, right, that's okay. You come next. Right, John, you have also three minutes and I'll let you know 30 seconds to go. Thank you. Uh, I stay at number five. I know the owner that built the house and he was told he had, could not go above one level. He was not allowed to build a bigger house, so it restricted his planning permission. That's what we've got there. 
Not only that, I'm an amateur weatherist person and I monitor the rainfall we've got here and I'm deeply concerned. When the extension's built, the two saturation points for rain will be at the left and the right. There will be no natural drainage and it will result in what I can see is water going into Helen's garden because it's downhill. There's two metres of a, two feet of a drop and she's going to suffer flooding and dampness. I've monitored the rain. There's been an increase in rainfall that we have had there. That is going to be a disaster for our house. And uh, basically that's it. Thanks, John. Any member? Anything? Nope. You may take your seat, John. Could have Ellen's Elaine's story, please. Agent or applicant? It's an agent. I know. Right. Ah, yep. You've got three minutes and I'll let you know. 30 seconds to go, Elaine. Thank you. The committee report and recommendation appears to be very close to that which was prepared for the application previously withdrawn in September 2015. It was acknowledged then that the proposal could be viewed as ambitious. It's disappointing that consideration was not given to the redesign extension. Ridgelines are now equal in height and do not breach the existing house. The extent forward 1.5 metres aligns with existing house projection again a reduction from the original proposal. It is also difficult to accept the decision for refusal. The case officer had been in contact with my architect to discuss the removal of the projecting balcony and replace this with a Juliet balcony. Amended drawings were resubmitted in September 2016 and at no point was it expressed that the whole concept of the extension was unacceptable and the amendments were considered in a positive way. I had hoped that the timber cladding would be viewed favourably on the grounds of visual interest and sustainability being locally sourced, but if this is unacceptable, there will be no issues in using a traditional wet dash render to match the existing house. Mention has been made to the imbalance of the adjoining dwelling. Both houses are already very different. My house has completely different gable windows as a main architectural feature where the adjoining house has none. The proposals remove the full height gable windows, which the Careview residents have pointed out currently them feeling overlooked, and replaces them with a single storey glazing. The windows are moved forward away from the adjacent rear garden ground, which is further protected by its own garage and driveway. Placing the feature windows to the front retains the amenity of my open view. The planning permission was previously approved at number two Kirkland Court. If you could see photos of the, the entrance to the court. Um, for a full height two-storey extension to the existing gable, this clearly changes the symmetry of the houses and clearly detracts from the appearance of the original building, which has been stated as grounds for refusal for this application. I have very sound reasons for wanting to make the proposed changes. I want to future-proof the house against infirmity and to provide facilities to allow me to remain living here independently without becoming a burden on services and care provision. 30 seconds to go, Elaine. I also have a sister and daughter, both of whom have long-term debilitating conditions which have the potential to leave them in need of long-term care, care which I could provide given the facilities. A few extra square metres of floor space and bifold doors would allow visual and physical unrestricted independent wheelchair access. The upstairs accommodation would afford privacy for care carer and persons in need of care. Finally, I would be pleased to answer any questions that committee members may have at this time. All right, thank you very much. Members, Ian. Um, could I just be, be clear, uh, Ms. Doria, on the, you mentioned that the extension would eliminate the, the, the windows which are currently uh, above ground floor height, yes. which is the, 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 uh, the next door neighbours uh, bone of contention, yes. if you like, about over, over, overview. So if you built that extension on the side there, there would be no windows that you could see over the fence. 
there will be just a, a single story window on the corner, at the front corner of the gable, as shown on the bottom left elevation. And effectively that is down below the height uh, of the existing window? Yes. All right, thanks. Any other members? No. Let me take your seat, Ellen. Thank you. Members are now in session. Ian. Just that last particular point, I thought rather than ask the, the applicant herself or, or the previous one, just can we actually see that visually on the, the elevations maybe we're looking at now? And that's, to me, that is the, the material consideration here. Is it overlooking, is it invasive on, on, on the, the neighbours? I think that's leg a legitimate point, but it can probably, if we can see the actual proposal rather than what's existing, because I think it's the proposal is what we're looking to, what it'll be like when it's built out. Because what we've just been told here is that the window will, will be removed for the upper, uh, for the, the apex, I think is what it's saying, and it, there'll be single story. I'm just trying to see if I can see that from there. When I look at that, there's no windows there whatsoever. Is that correct? The bottom left hand side? Uh, Chair, yes. If you look at the, the east elevation that's marked at the bottom side, that's, yeah, just where I was showing it just now, that's the window. Obviously, what you have just now are windows that go the full height, but from a, a human perspective, you're never going to be able to get up to that. It's, uh, it's all on single story at the moment, so there was no, unless somebody was standing on top of a chair or something, they couldn't actually overlook. So it's not making the, the situation significantly better or worse. The change in terms of privacy is you're bringing that closer to the neighbouring property by two metres. So from a human perspective, when you're standing at that window, it would have the same effect as on the other one uh, as existing, but two metres closer to the neighbour's property. So I can appreciate the point they're making. Yeah, Ian. I just wonder if something like that, it, does it breach the, is it the nine metre window to window? Again, would it have to be frosted at that point? Would it be obscure? I would imagine that would be the case, but just we haven't got that. It looks obscure because I thought it was a door opening on the front, so clearly it's, it is a window opening, as you're pointing out, David. But I wonder, would that be a, a standard condition that would be applied? I mean, I think it, it's fair what the, the objectors are saying in regards to there is a potential overlooking, but at the same time, can the whole the whole application is designed with about a particular needs. Is it over domineering? My view. It's on the verge, but I would probably support the application that's there, but subject to uh, taking into consideration the objector's uh, views. Jim. Thanks, Chair. I, I think the case officer quite clearly points out it's matching scale. It's nothing to do with overlooking. That's merely part of the proposal of presentation that objectors and, and applicants are making. So I'd be content to support the officer's recommendation. Tom. Happy to second uh, Jim. I, th I think we're getting a wee bit uh, led astray there. If you look at the grounds for refusal, it's very, very clearly it's all about the massing and scale, and it certainly is a, a major overdevelopment of that particular property. Ian. Yeah, so, sorry to come back to the, the, the window again there. What height is that window in relation to the fence? It would be a similar height to the, where the glazing bar is in the middle of those windows there at the moment. Jane? Um, one of the objectors suggested that uh, Cairnview Cottage is slightly lower, set slightly lower. Can the officer help me with that, whether that is the case or not? The ground does slope away very gently to the <coughs> towards Cairnview Cottage. And it does sit slightly lower, approximately um, two feet lower, just at the main traditional cottage itself. Thank you, Chairman. Yes. Right, we've got uh, David. I just <coughs> can I ask a question. That, that front door, the position it's in just now, is it retaining that position or is it being moved out as well? It would retain its position. It will be almost a U-shaped configuration to the front elevation. With Yes, if you can see the recess of the existing door there. Uh, just one quick question. Could you move on a wee bit, please? Um, keep going. Keep going. I'm trying to see. see uh, 
No, the back to sorry, back one. That so what's the di the distance between that gable end and the other house? Because that's that's I'm, I'm assuming that's the shared boundary fence, am I right? That's correct. That's just over three metres just now, so it'll just be over yeah. a metre remaining. So how many the, the boundary fence, the actual rear of Cairnview Cottage, is approximately nine metres. Nine metres. Correct. There'll be approximately, there'll be less than 11 metres between the new extended property and the neighbouring property once this has been developed. There's approximately nine metres from the house to the boundary fence and there's approximately three metres from the boundary fence to the existing gable at the moment. So once that's extended by two metres, there'll be just over a metre remaining of area ground here. David. In terms of the distance, obviously we are not recommending refusal on grounds of amenity. And what you have in the, an existing situation as well, where I presume, I don't know whether the, the windows there were original or not, but they are existing. Um, so it's really just to, to remind members that we're not getting involved in the, the issues of amenity, that it's really that's the design and the matting and the scale of what's being proposed on a semi-detached property, which we don't feel complies with the, the relevant policy. So it, it isn't one of the grounds that you'll note as recommended for refusal. Can you come back in? Yeah. Yeah, thanks very much. But, uh, to the objectors, uh, their objection was about amenity. So that's the reason for the question. So um, thanks very much for your clarity, David. Right, I've got a motion. I've got a motion and a second there. Yeah, and Ian has put in a Ian went with uh, for accepting. Right, Ian. What I said was that I would again. I would look favourably on it, depending on. I was still waiting a clarification in regards to would it be obscure glass for sure. I would imagine. I think it's eighteen window, eighteen meter window to window. I would imagine it would be conditioned. Uh, I still. I would like to have, to be absolutely clear in my own mind. I would have liked to have understood what the difference in size and scale it is. Again, we're saying it's bigger. The ridge height's the same. Looks pretty much when you look at it from the front, but we've got a, an area, a, a square metre ridge area, we've got in regards to the existing. How much does the proposed actually add to that? I'd like to add an idea. Again, we'll have that, that question answered, so I'm not going to put a proposal on unless I've got information come back in regards to that, but I would lean towards supporting it because it's, I mean, somebody's, this is in regards to uh, safe proof and a full proof. And, it's like a, a, an all through housing, right through to the end of days, and that's something that the council is very heavily involved in at a, a different level from here, certainly. So somebody's willing to pay for this themselves, it's whether it fits this particular site or not. Right. So, uh -huh. yeah. Can I just ask uh, how planning looks on, on that? The reasons given by the applicant um, uh, in terms of uh, being able to maintain an independent lifestyle uh, should disability follow and uh, provide less of a burden on social services. How, how Does that fit at, at all in with, with planning policy? Because I think that's a, a fairly uh, crucial, uh, crucial thing. Personal circumstances aren't normally a material consideration for the simple reason that the extension to this property will be there a lot longer than the, the actual needs of the individual applicant. So we have to take a longer term view on that. Um, generally speaking, we are supportive of such things provided it meets with other policies. And the overriding policy here is obviously H8 in the LDP on alterations, extensions to dwelling houses. Hey David, so we've got a motion. That agreed? Agreed. And I can confirm that the decision of the planning committee is to go with officer's recommendations and this application is refused. Thank you, Lucy. We've got a uh, number five on the agenda. It's Carscrew Farm, Glen Luce, Newton Stewart, 16 stroke B stroke 1 stroke 0155. And the recommendation is to approve conditionally. And we've got Mary Mitchell speaking in on this one. Just whenever you're ready, Mary. Oh, 
Okay, I'll show you some images first. Um, there is a farm, Karskru farm. It's fairly isolated. There aren't any near neighbours. There are two dwelling. However, <coughs> not that I want person to leave, but normally if it was a member who was uh, taking part in this, they would be asked to leave the room. I'm just wondering if the officer who has a connection with this should be in the room when we're doing this. Um, it isn't actually a procedural thing that I'm aware of before, but if it makes members more comfortable, I'm ha certainly happy to ask Iona to remove herself to the members' lounge. <laughs> So now we're ready, Mary. Okay, there are two dwelling houses on the farm. Um, both are um, related to the to, to the farm uh, business. There, um, there are no near neighbours. The proposed agricultural shed is marked out in red. It's a fairly standard um, agricultural shed. These are the photographs here. So this is looking westward along the road. You can see the shed up to the right. And that's the last image there. Um, the footprint is 404 square meters. Um, uh, there's nothing really contentious from a planning point of view about the shed. Um, the reason it's come before you today is that the applicant is a close relative of a member of the planning staff. Is, is this retrospective? Yes, it is. It was built about a year ago. Paragraph 1.3. It is in um, yeah, paragraph 1.3. Jim. I take it the shed is in keeping with the other agricultural buildings already on the steady. It is. Thank you. Don. I'd be happy to grant it and suggest to Mr. Brook that in future he seeks a bit of advice for his relative before he builds anything. Okay, I agree. Stephen? Yeah, I was just going to ask about uh, lighting, um, and I don't know if it's appropriate or if it's standard to have a condition. Uh, I noticed this is to improve without <coughs> without any conditions, um, but uh, obviously sort of lighting in, in the rural area, is there any controls or good guidance we can uh, apply or a directive we can we can uh, put in place to, to ensure that there's no light pollution? Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, we normally wouldn't attach that as a condition, but we do attach it, attach it as a directive, uh, which is advice, which is uh, given with any permission and a link to the uh, dark sky and um, general lighting guidance that we have. Stephen. Thank you. No, I appreciate that. Um, given that it's already there, um, are we able to retrospectively give that directive to the applicant so that it can go back in time and look at the advice now that they've built it? Uh, yes, it's never easy with a retrospective application. We can't in any event actually enforce these things that don't require planning permission, so lighting internally isn't one of these things, so it is advice and encouragement is all we could actually do, even for a non-retrospective application. Members agreed? Go on to Strunrad, Strunrad Museum, 55 George Street, Strunrad, 16 stroke, 1219 stroke LBC. And we've got Iona Brook speaking on this one when she comes back in. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, Iona. Thank you, Chair. This application has been brought before you because it relates to land and council ownership and the application has been made by the council. It relates to the upgrading of the current security system at the Strunyar Museum. 
Um, the works would include external, internal locks to be replaced, existing cameras to be replaced, an internal roller shutter door to be replaced with a new automatic roller door, an existing timber external door to be replaced, um, new security panels, vibration and smoke detectors, and the installation of an in internal wooden panel over some of the windows. The property is um, within the main furthy of Stranraer. It's category A listed. That's the front elevation. We have the side elevation, and some of the windows that you can see to the uh, first floor would be boarded with internal boarding just to make them more secure. Some of them already are boarded just now, um, and this would just be continued to cover the rest of the remaining windows. This is the rear elevation. You can see again here the windows are currently boarded internally, and this door here is to be replaced. Internally, it's all configured as a museum as you would expect to be. You can see the security cam is already in situ, and these would just be upgraded. Um, again, another security cam and another one of the other rooms. This is the roller door, which would be replaced uh, with an automatic door. And these are the windows that are affected that would be either reboarded or boarded up. So three in the back elevation and the two on the front side elevation, sorry. And again, it would just be boarding internally attached to the actual window. A new security alarm box would also be placed on the front elevation, just replacing one that's already there. And these are just showing the placements of the various cameras and smoke detectors. And those are the motion detectors that would be put in situ. It is recommended for approval. Thank you. Members, Patsy. Can I, can I just ask about the uh, windows that are already boarded up? You saw a picture on the lower ground. Are they done on the outside? Or? No, it's all internally done. Uh, there there so is some windows, sorry. Those ones there are boarded up, yes. And there's windows there which are boarded up at the ground floor level on the external. But these, the window, this application relates to the internal boarding of the first floor level windows. Sorry, Chair. So why were they done externally? Just because they're on the lower ground, on the ground floor, is it? I'm not sure. That was a historic decision. Al Alistair. As far as I'm concerned, Chair, this is a much valued community facility. It's utilised uh, for various exhibitions, etc. It's a perfectly reasonable suggestion. Uh, in fact, that we upgrade the security system. And on that basis, I would have no compunction in suggesting we adopt the officer's recommendation uh, to grant it unconditionally. Even. Yeah, I'm just, uh, it's just on the subject of boarding and the windows. Um, I mean, that's quite an attractive building, and it's obviously got a good status. Uh, is there scope, and it's maybe not the place for imagination in this chamber today, but um, is there scope for uh, maybe having some kind of feature made of the boarding, you know, maybe involving... That's not an application. No, I know, that's... that's I, know, I know, but it's an application we're dealing with. Sure, so I'll just finish what I'm saying. Um, so it was just really scope, uh, is there scope for how the boarding is presented to make, um, to enhance the attractiveness of the building? Thanks, Stephen. <laughs> Ian. Uh, just a second, Alistair's recommendation. Any members are wise minded? Andy. It's just a bit of clarification. This is a category A, isn't it? That's the highest listing we have. Yeah. Um, what happens inside the building should be immaterial to a certain extent. And I'm just going to ask the, the question here is if that was a hotel, for example, would they be allowed to put the metal stuff in the back door? When any building is listed, be it category A, B or C, it's listed internally and externally. So basically the alterations which are taking place here do require listed building consent. A just means it's of national importance, but historically what would have happened is we would have had to apply to Historic Scotland for listed building consent. Uh, they now no longer exist. It's Historic Environment Scotland, which is a slightly different agency. So. That's why you're seeing it before yourselves. Jim. Is the boarding a permanent feature 
or are the boards removed during the day? So it's not like shutters which can be closed. Thank you. Agreed. Right. I have no other further.